Oh, it is a perch. It is a perch. Oh my God, it's an absolute horse. It's huge. <gasps> Good morning, folks, and welcome to a very beautiful, very frosty, and very fresh Midlands. Uh, Andy again from the Everyone Only Fishing Channel, and uh, today we've come out to do a little bit of jigging on a local river. Quite a big river. Uh, it rhymes with the word tent, but it's very secret, so keep it between you and me. I haven't spent as much time on this river as I really ought to have done, so I figured that over the next couple of months, IB and I are going to spend a bit more time on here, get to know it a bit better. Got good stocks of perch, good stocks of pike, there's even some zander around, so there's plenty for us to go at, we just need to get to know it a little bit better. So that's exactly the plan today. I've come out, I've got two rods with me, I'm totally set up for jigging, I've got two rods, I've got a bag, I've got a net, and that's me, that's all I've got. The only way we're going to find out what's in this mystery river tent is to go out and throw a few lures, so I'm going to get rigged up and we'll crack on. Well, that very cold start of the day is already giving way to a very, very bright hot one. I'm dressed up for sub-zero temperatures. A five minute walk across the field to the river, I'm already sweating. That's okay though, because now we're by the river, everything's absolutely fine. As I say, a chance of pike, perch, or zander, ideally I've come here to fish for perch, but in truth, I've come here to get a few bites, that's the plan. I've sorted out a load of jigging stuff. Uh, last night I was quite careful, I, I've packed quite light, for me anyway, I usually bring everything. But most of what I've bought is very natural colours. The river's a little bit low uh, and it's very, very clear. So I'm not anticipating that the very bright stuff is going to be the way to go. I also think it's quite likely that I'm going to have to fish next to quite hard structure. We've had a few cold nights now and it's quite possible that these perch have started to shoal. So I've been on Google Maps. In truth, I haven't got a whole lot to go at in terms of hard structure where you might find perch. But I have got a little feature next to me, uh, an old sluice gate that you'd assume there's going to be a little bit of depth there, a little bit of structure. There could be some snags on the bottom. So... We'll give this a swing for 20 minutes, I think, and see what we can find. So as I've mentioned, I've got two rods with me, one of which is absolutely brand spanking new. You probably can't see that very well. It's the new um, Savage Gear XLNT3. I've got a 8'2", uh, 7 to 25, which should be ideal for this style of fishing. So as well as catching a few fish, hopefully I'm going to be able to give you guys the lowdown on one of the new Savage Gear rods. Starting off on a 10 gram head, trying to launch it towards that far bank. I don't know how deep it is over there. I've not fished this before for perch, so uh, this is going to be a learning experience for the first 20 minutes or so. So already learning. One of the great things about jigging is that it kind of acts as an automatic marking system. You know, it gives you a really good idea of where the depth is and you know, what kind of bottom you're fishing on. You can feel plenty through it. And I already know that there's a, there's a good depth on the far bank here, but after it gets about two thirds of the way across the river, it shelves up very, very quickly. So I'm getting about 10, 15 yards of effective fishing here before, before I start whacking weed and leaves and all that rubbish. It's not to say there couldn't be a few fish on that shelf. Only five minutes in, but it's already time for the first change of the day. I started off with the uh, motor oil coloured shad there, that little tea tail. I really like the motor oil first thing in the morning when there's low light, just because it creates such a big silhouette, you know. Generally, um, fish pick that up pretty readily in the mornings, but it could already be too bright for that, so I'm going to switch on this. I'm going to go to something a bit more natural, uh, and we'll just give this Peter Hard structure on the far bank another five minutes, because I, I feel pretty sure there should be fish there. So, slightly more natural bait, very realistic, loose body roach. I'd just say actually on the heavier rod, again you probably won't be able to see it, on the heavier rod I am actually using a wire trace. I know there's, I know there's likely to be pike around here and with the slightly bigger baits I'm quite likely to encounter one at some point. On the lighter rod I probably won't use a wire trace, but that'll only be using at the max 7cm baits. Another quick change, um, I'm not going to flog a dead horse all day, I haven't had any tax or anything yet on that far bank, but I don't know, it just, it looks so good, I'm 
I think we'll give this one last try. I'm gonna go slightly heavier on the bait this time. I've been throwing a 10 gram head, which I think is enough. It's getting down absolutely fine. The problem is it's going through so quickly because I'm having to cast so far because the rivers are quite fast. It's going through the it's going through the area I want to fish really quickly. So I just wonder with a slightly heavier head, even though the presentation probably won't be quite as nice, whether it might just keep me in the strike zone a little bit longer. We'll give it a go. So I hope you can see that there. I've gone with the TP Minnow, which I think is about a, a 25 gram head, something like that. It, whatever it is, it's much heavier than what I had on. The reason I've gone for this as opposed to anything else is because it's weedless. Because I know this is way too heavy for the situation I'm fishing in. It's almost certainly more likely to find a snag or get hung up or just kind of cause a nuisance on the bottom. So with it being weedless, it might just save me from getting snagged up, we'll see. cast like a freaking bullet. Yeah, I mean straight away that thing is that thing is down, you know, I'm jigging this and it's it's not really leaving the riverbed, which to be honest is kind of what I'm looking for. Mm, that could have been a tap. Not certain, it just felt different, but with this big heavy head on, you know, I'll get a lot of heavier thumps and you know, knocks on rocks and stuff on the bottom. I have a feeling if one takes it, they'll let me know. Oh, nice deep pull. Really deep pull. That 10 gram head took a while to get down then. That's a big snag. Right, got it out of that snag in the end. Um, I'll have a couple more throws with this, but I think I might switch to something weedless in here. Ah, shallow at the back, definitely. I didn't take as long to hit the bottom. Finally, finally a fish. Jeez. Feels like a perch. Yeah, it is. Ah, nice one as well. Yeah, that'll do. Thank goodness for that. It's not just me. I'd say first fish in the net. While it's no, no monster, it's not an unreasonable fish. A little bit skinny, could do with a bit more weight. But more importantly, we might have found a few. I want to get back in there, see if we can find some more. Okay, so it goes without saying that we're going to make that Made that same cast again. Jeez, it's good to get off the mark. I mean, it's weird, you know. You look at these places on Google Maps and you, you see them in the flesh and all that hard structure back there. You think, yeah, that's where I'll catch the fish. This is just a, a big, deep, slow pool, you know. There's nothing particularly special looking about it. And here's deep. And all of a sudden, you find a few. Or one. Hopefully, you find a few. Given these fish are at the back of this pool, but it's slightly shallower, I'm actually thinking of switching rods, just going a little bit more finesse. This 10 gram head feels a bit too much here. Yeah, it's gonna be quite hard for me to tell what's bottom and what's very delicate take, so, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch rods. I'm gonna put that crayfish through here first because it's something different, and then we'll probably switch to a small shad on the lighter rod. Okay, let's try this reaction cray through here. Six gram heads. It should get down and stay down. Okay, time for a change. Just the one fish out of this pool so far. I've tried the crayfish on the light rod and that hasn't done it, so I'm gonna to switch to the um, real tail bleak. It's a total favorite of mine. Really, really good on the cheb. Nice profile, fish can see it. It looks realistic, you know, it's absolute fish candy. So it's generally the the bait that I turn to when I'm struggling with other stuff. Let's give one of these a go. Righty, 3D bleed time. There's a fish, straight away, first cast on the bleat. Yeah, another stripey. There we go. Well, fish number two. Not a monster by national standards, but 
really nice to go through the motions and figure out the system and you know find a way of making it work this is all about keeping changing it keep finding something that works eventually you'll come across the right thing if you've got enough options in your bag you can catch these fish Right, back in the car, she starts a, a long, long walk back. Spot number A hasn't really produced. I wanted to fish this place first because I felt like that sluice gate would probably be an early morning spot because the sun rises and shines straight down into it. So I wanted to fish that first. I'm really surprised that I didn't get any fish there. I don't think I was fishing it massively efficiently. I said at the time, I felt like the, you know, I could get the jigs close to it three or four hops and you're out away from the killing zone and I think that was a problem. I, I might have a look to see if it's possible to fish that from the other bank maybe, I don't know. The spot that did produce a couple of fish, I don't know, it was essentially just a deep hole. There was no there was no great structure around there. There certainly wasn't any hard structure. It was just deep. I only had two out of there so it wasn't if you know I've absolutely hammered it. But you know, I had a couple of takes, um landed a couple of fish and it worked out okay. Up from there I walked for about another mile and there was just nothing of any note. It looked lovely water to maybe try to stick floats on or something like that. The spot I'm about to go to now is an area around uh, a big old bridge and I've left that for now because I kind of felt like there's always going to be fish around this bridge. Whereas an area like where I've just been to, I guess they'd probably be a little bit more picky about the times of day. So I've got about a 10 minute drive, it's only a short drive down the road and I'll meet you guys at spot two. Right, so just got to the bridge, uh, minus a couple of layers of clothing. Jeez, it's hot all of a sudden. Uh, there's barely a cloud in the sky and it's warm. When I first stepped out of the house this morning, it was minus two. And now it must be plus 10, 15, 12, maybe even 15 degrees. It's hot, whatever it is. Obviously not ideal perch fishing conditions. So I've only got half an hour, 40 minutes of GoPro battery left. I've got GoPro battery life left. That's difficult. So I'll give him a best underneath the bridge and see what we can do. All right, so it's definitely a job for the longer rod. Um, might not be very clear on the GoPro, but there's a big slack in between two flow lines. And I'm pretty sure that that's where my bait's going to need to be. I don't think it's going to be any good in the main flow. So I've moved down a bit from the bridge. Um, Jeez, it's an absolute tackle graveyard, that place. I've thrown diff six different configurations, rigs, whatever you want to call them, and uh, not got any of them back. So <laughs> decided to get out of dodge and try the, try the tail of the pool rather than throwing it up at the top. Gone back to the old favourite. 3D bleak on a chair as well. I'll just twitch this along the deck, see if anyone's home. Finally. Oh, it's off. Jeez, I feel like a good fish as well. Oh, dang it. There we go. Got that one. That's a nice fish as well. Yeah, finally. Jeez. So yeah, not the uh, not the easiest day so far, but all of a sudden we've had a, a couple of bites in a row. I'm going to rue the one I lost on the cast before though, because that was much bigger than this. Let's get him back. Well, that took a while. Rescued by the old faithful 3D Bleak again. They seem to be on this inside seam. I'm not going to cast too far. That's a good one. That feels a good fish. Might not be a perch actually, it could be a pike. It's a kiting. If 
fight tonight to perch, that's for sure. Oh, it is a perch. It is a perch. Oh my god, it's an absolute horse. It's huge. <gasps> Absolutely huge fish. Ah, jeez, well that's the kind of fish we've been waiting for all day. I must admit it's not quite as big as I thought when it first hit the net. I got a little bit excited then. But it's still an absolute cracker. Check that bad boy out. Gorgeous fish. Very pleased with that. That's what we came here for. I'm a big believer that you earn your fish and um, geez I feel like for the amount of effort I've put in so far today I've earned that one. I've got literally like 10 minutes worth of battery left on the GoPro. I was quite lucky to squeeze that one in. There could even be time for one more. That 3D bleak is just fantastic. Geez that's caught some fish for me. Uh, it's such a simple rig. Uh, it's such a simple lure but geez they just seem to love it and these fish are hoovering it up. I'm going to get back in there, see if I can pull one or two more out before all the batteries die, but I'm pretty chuffed with that. That now represents a reasonable day. Well, that was pretty comedic timing. So I made a really big effort to get in the car and drive to one last spot just to give it a go. I walked up for about 10 minutes to get to the right place. Turned the GoPro on, made a cast, and the second the lure hit the water, the last GoPro battery died, and that was that. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wrap it up because I've got no battery left for anything. So I'm not really sure what to make of today. Actually, I quite like you guys to tell me what you make of today. Weird conditions for perch, obviously it's very bright, it's very clear, there's a million one excuses. Ultimately, I haven't caught as many fish as I wanted to. What I have done is caught a reasonably sized fish. I was really pleased with that fish at, at 38 centimetres. That, to me, at least represents a, a quality fish. I hope these videos that I do on my own at least give you a little bit of insight into the way I go about it. I try and keep feeding you guys the information, let you know about the spot changes, let you know about the bait changes. And the people who I fished with always say that I'm a furious changer. Uh, and I think that there's a lot to be said for that. If, you know, if it's something's not working, change it, of course. You know, there's no point doing the same thing over and over again. So, you know, I tend to any more than five minutes without a bite. And to me, I must be doing something wrong. That might not always be the case, but geez, I, I always think you're better off changing stuff. Keep ringing the changes, keep trying new things, and eventually you'll crack the code. And, and that happened today. Just a quick reminder to you all that we've got a competition running on the video previous to this one where I, B and I do a little wasp challenge on the canal. It's about 50 quid's worth of um, Savage Gear 3D Fry and the uh, Micro Dart Jig Heads. Uh, and all you've got to do is guess the length of a fish and a lure and combine them to come up with a number. Uh, and I can tell you that as it stands, no one has got it exactly right. So the competition is still wide open. It's not easy, but have a look, have a look at the fish, make an educated guess. Remember, you've got to be subscribed to the channel, so you'll need to do that. On the subject of subscribing to the channel, please do that, because IB and I really appreciate it. It means we can keep in touch. If you hit the bell icon, uh, it means you'll get a notification when we release another video. We're going to try and do as many as possible for you guys. Uh, pike, perch, zander, fly fishing through the winter. We've got loads of cool plans, and we'd like to share them with you. Folks, don't forget that in the description box below, you'll find uh, information on all the kit that, that I'm using during the course of the day, including that new Savage Gear XLNT3, which I was very surprised at, to be honest. I've used the previous models of the XLNTs, and they've always been perfectly good rods, but they've always felt a bit more like old fashioned spinning rods through action, you know. That thing's different, it's much faster than I expected. Uh, keep an eye out for the channel soon because there'll be a review coming up on that rod once I've used it a bit more. Really, really pleasant surprise. So all that's left for me to do is to say thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Uh, drop, drop us a comment in the comment section. Um, let us know what you think of the video. Let us know the format. Is there anything you think I could have done differently on the day? Uh, and we'll catch you again very, very soon for some more videos. Thanks a lot.